Well, praise the Lord. We say uh, good God Tuesday afternoon to all of you that are listening in on this live broadcast, this live Facebook broadcast, and by way of, of uh, YouTube also, you that are here in the sanctuary in this Bible study today. We are so grateful to our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ for life once again, health and strength, and to look upon your faces and to see that the Lord has been good to you. Yes, he's been good to you. You're still alive. You can go about your business and and uh, you're blessed, you're blessed, you're blessed. Even though things might not be going the way you would love for them to go, but if you just keep walking with the Lord, by and by things will get better. I can guarantee you that things will get better. As long as you walk with God, the better things going to get. Amen. It might be a little tough starting out, but if you walk with him, he's going to help you to deal with every situation that you have to face with, uh, that you're faced with. And some of the things he'll get help you to overcome them because he will cause you to be victorious. The scripture said we are more than conquerors mm -hmm. in Christ Jesus, but we got to keep walking with him. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. Everything don't happen uh, miraculously. It's over a period of time. Mm -hmm. And you can look back over your life and see some changes uh, that you have made since you start, started this walk with God. Amen, amen. So that's enough to keep us going. We say greeting to all of you that are in uh, Missouri, different parts of Illinois, even down in the land of Arkansas, uh, Georgia, and wherever our voices may be heard. We say praise the Lord to all of you, and we pray that the Lord will continue to bless you as you walk with him and as you listen to these Bible studies, that your knowledge will grow in grace of the Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. That's what it's all about. Our world is trouble. Trouble everywhere. And the only peace we're going to find is in Jesus. That's the only peace we're going to find. You can't find it. Many of y'all done tried it. You done went out there and tried it and you couldn't get it out there. But I, I, I guarantee you, if you seek him, the God of the universe, his son, Jesus Christ, you will find peace. Because he told us, my peace I give unto you. And his peace surpasses all understanding. Yeah. You're going through and people looking at you saying, how is he holding up? How is she holding up? That you have the peace of God. <laughs> That's what it is. Amen, amen. All right, we're going to go into our lesson today. There are some questions that have been asked, and we want to look at them. We're going to go to the, to the scriptures, and uh, Minister Harris will be reading the, the question that was asked, and Minister Wilson will read them, and we will discuss them according to the word of God, not according to what Pastor Adam said. But according to what God has said, and we will do that to the best of our ability according to the scriptures. We will take the scriptures and try to help us to support what God, uh, what we're saying or what we're teaching. All right, that first question is. The first question, question. Is it wrong to wear pants? Is it wrong to wear pants? Now, that is an old, old question that has been down through the centuries of the church. Is it wrong to wear pants? And we used to go to that scripture as a child. I remember in the early 50s, as a child, a woman was not supposed to wear things pertaining to man. And you'll find that in Deuteronomy. But 
if you, if, you, if, you, if you go to use that scripture, in those days, men didn't have pants. <laughs> men didn't wear pants. Mm -hmm. So uh, how could you take that and put it with the church of today? Mm -hmm. it, 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 but our forefathers taught that. They taught, it was a lot of things that they taught that was not biblical. It was good, but it wasn't biblical. And we have to teach what the Bible say. Uh, uh, John told us in Revelation, he said, this book, we was not to add nothing to it, and we wasn't to take anything away from it. We, we, and, and, and I was one of those that was dogmatic about it. Yeah, I, I, I was I was hardcore on women wearing pants and women wearing jewelry and women wearing lipstick and all of that because that's what I was brought up under. And I was hardcore on it. And as I walked with God and began to walk with God and began to study this word of God and through studying this word of God, the spirit of God would give me the revelation of what God was saying through his scriptures. It wasn't that I had a vision. It was through the scriptures. The Spirit of God took me and walked me through the scriptures to show me. And when I, when God showed me that, I had to stop preaching that because I was adding to. Now, we're going to go into scripture. Uh, Get me the 15th chapter, Minister Wilson, of the book of Acts. Now, let me say this to us. I was basing my teaching on Genesis, I believe, the 37th chapter of Genesis. Regarding jury. Regarding jury. And I was very dogmatic about it. I'm not, I, I, look, and it was all because of what I was taught as a child. I grew up, and I was taught that. Uh, I believe that's the 37th chapter, or may not be. Uh, when, 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 uh, I'm just going to, uh, 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 you all are familiar with it. When Jacob, it was only 70 souls at that time. Jacob, his 12 sons, and their wives and their children. And God told Jacob, he says, tell Israel, tell the children, they come before me. I want them to wash themselves. Wash yourself. Clean yourself. And men, don't you go near your wife. Don't go into your wife. You all know what that means. Don't go into your wife. You stay, don't have nothing to do with your wife as far as sexual. And I want them to come before God told Jacob, I want them to come before me and to present himself before me. So Jacob did just what God told him. He went and told the 70 what God had said. And the Bible says that Jacob got them together. He took away their earrings. He took away their nose ring. He took away their jewelry. And he went and buried it under a tree. And I took that and I ran with it. And, and I would say, see, Israel was the church in the wilderness. So Israel, God, Jacob took away their jewelry that, and buried it. And whenever you bury something, it's dead. It don't come back. So that was my ground of saying you shouldn't be wearing jewelry. Now, it was basically focused on women's. 
Because at that time, men didn't wear jewelry. Now, at one point, let me say this. That in, in biblical days, yes, uh, when a man as a servant of his master, if when it comes time to free that servant and let him have his freedom from being a slave, and if the master would free that slave, you're on your own. Now you can go. But if that slave loved his master and didn't want to leave his master, the Bible says, and I think that's found in Exodus and maybe Deut in Deuteronomy, he would come to his master and tell his master, I love you, I don't want to leave you, I want to be your slave. The master would take an ark and cut a hole in his ear and would put an earring in his ear, signifying that you're my slave forever. That's why I tell young men, when y'all run around with them earrings in your ear, who's your boss? Whose slave are you? Because that's where it originated from. And they think that's cool walking around with an earring in their ear. We got some old men out here walking around with it in their ear. They don't understand the significance of what that means. You're somebody's slave. So, uh, when, 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 when uh, Jacob did that, he buried the gold, the earrings and the golden rings and all that he buried. So that's why I took that and I said, the church folks should be wearing jewelry. That was my ideology. That was my understanding because I was taught it. But as I walked with the Lord and I began to study God's word, see, when you are sincere and you're seeking God for the truth, God's going to lead you in the truth. God's going to show you where you've been wrong. And if you are humble enough, you will humble yourself and say, Lord, I am sorry. Lord, I was wrong. If you have, a, now let me say this. If you have the Holy Spirit in you, <laughs> If you have been led by the Holy if you have been born again of the Holy Ghost, the Holy Ghost is going to lead you into all righteousness. The Holy Ghost will give you the revelation of God's word. That's why Paul said, a natural minded man, he can't conceive, he, he's not able to apprehend, he's not able to understand, comprehend what this Bible is saying. That's why it has to, there's certain things that a natural-minded person, a person that has not the Holy Ghost, there's certain things that they understand in this Bible. There's certain things that they know that I'm a sinner. <laughs> I need to be saved. There's certain things they know. But there's other spiritual things that they don't comprehend it. And it takes the Holy Ghost. It takes the Spirit of God to give them the revelation. But you have to study to show yourself approved. Study God's Word, and God will help you to understand. So, as I was uh, uh, preaching and ministering, and right before God called me into the pastoral field, I was studying, really, really studying the Scriptures, and one day, I was reading, and my Bible led me to Isaiah, the 61st chapter, regarding jury. Regarding jury. Now, y'all just walk with me now. Just walk with me. Don't, don't turn me off because I'm teaching what I'm teaching. I'm trying to help us understand something. So as we, as I was studying, get me in the 61st chapter of Isaiah and the 10th verse. During this time, 
Israel had went into captivity. Israel was in Babylon. They had defied, they had disobeyed God's word, and because she had disobeyed God's word and refused to be subject to God's word, and they became a rebellious nation, God allowed them to go into captivity under Nebuchadnezzar's Babylon. Because of their rebelliousness, because they refused to hear what and walk according to the prophet of God. The prophet was telling them about their singing. There was some false prophet saying, no, nothing going to happen to you. You, you, you're the temple of God. We're the temple of God. We got people. We're, we're God's church. God's not going to allow nothing to happen to us. Look here, I don't care who you are. Excuse me for saying that. If God says something in his word, and it is pertinent in our life to walk with God and be and and and, and to walk with God in harmony, we got to do what God say do. Israel refused to do it, and they listened to the wrong people. They listened to false prophets, and no, uh, nothing going to happen to you, Israel. Nothing going to happen to you, Judah. Yeah. And they, they man was sick. God said these people, they're imputed people. They, they sick from the head to the sole of their foot. All right. God did everything to try to get them to turn back to him and obey his word. They wouldn't do it. So God said, enough for one thing left for them to do, and that's to let them go into captivity. Let them suffer. The minute their, their old men going to die, their children going to die, there's going to come a point when, 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 when your family folks will die and you can't even bury them. You won't be able to bury them because you got to run. You got to go. We experienced some of that right here in Chicago with COVID. Some of our loved ones died and we couldn't even bury them. What are you saying? Judgment is in the land. Just like it was in Judah day in Babylon, judgment came. God sent judgment because of disobedience and rebellion, folk. Corona is judgment in the land. Yes, it's in the church and the ungodly. So, uh, because they refused to obey God, they went into captivity. And it wasn't because they was wearing jewelry. <laughs> it wasn't because they was wearing pants. It was because they were rebellion against God's law, God's word. Didn't, and and we're going to get into that. We're going to get into that. Okay, so then... In the six, while they were in captivity in Babylon, God said this about them. Uh, uh, God said first, he said, when they were in captivity, he said in the 29th chapter of Isaiah, 29th chapter of Jeremiah. Let me, let me, let me, let me go there right quick. 29th chapter of Jeremiah. This was during the time when they were in captivity. God said to Israel, I know the thoughts that I think towards you, said the Lord, thoughts of peace and not of evil, to give you an expected end. Then shall ye call upon me, and ye shall go and pray unto me, and I will hearken unto you. I will hear your prayer and act upon the prayer that you pray. That's what God is saying. Israel is, 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 is in, in, in Babylon now. They in, in in captivity. In the 61st chapter of this saint in Isaiah, Minister Wilson, 60, 61 and, 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 and uh, maybe start reading at the ninth verse. And their seed shall be known among the Gentiles and their offspring among the people. All that see them shall acknowledge them that they are the seed which the Lord hath blessed. I will greatly rejoice in the Lord. My soul shall be joyful in my God. For he hath clothed me with the garments of salvation. 
He had covered me with the robe of righteousness as a bridegroom decorated himself with ornaments and a bride adorning herself with her jewels. God said, Israel, this was God talking to Israel. This is what I'm going to do for you when you come out of captivity. I'm going to adorn you. Who was Israel? Israel was God's bride. Just like the church is today. The church, the call I believe, those that have repented of their sin, baptized in Jesus' name, been filled with the Holy Ghost, you are the body of Christ. You are the church. You are Jesus Christ's bride. And he's the bridegroom. And God is telling Israel here, he said, I'm going to adore you. I'm going to make you look like a bride. You're going to be decked out. When I read that, he said, I'm going to robe. He said, I will greatly rejoice in the Lord. My soul shall be joyful in my God. For he has clothed me with garments of salvation. He has covered me with a robe of righteousness. Saying that God is pleased with me. He's so pleased with me, he covered me in righteousness. It wasn't my righteousness. It was the righteousness of God because he was pleased with me. As a bridegroom, deck is himself with ornaments, and as a bride woman, adore herself with jewelry. God said, I'm going I'm to do something for you. Now, how are we to take that? How are we to take that? We don't, we don't take that and abuse it. We don't take that and draw attention to ourselves by decking ourselves with all kinds of just, you know, going overboard. Drawing attention to yourself. When I read that, now I'm spinning. Lord, you got to help me with this now because I was one of them persons that would start to guess this. How am I going to deal with this? You telling me that you're going to adorn her. Egypt was a type of willingness. I mean, Egypt was a type of sin. The willingness was to Take Israel out of sin and take them to the wilderness to, to cleanse them. And when they came out, they would come out as one would go through the finery as pure gold. Everything would be washed away. This is what we are as a church today. We are here on this earth. We are going through. We are going through. We are being purified. We are being cleansed. We're laying off everything that's not like God. Because one day our master, the chief shepherd, is going to show up. And when he shows up, we want him to be well pleased with us. <laughs> we want him to be well pleased. That's why we're getting rid of some stuff. This earth here is not what we supposed to just get caught up in and just cabareting and all that and just doing what? This earth here is a place of preparation because this earth is not our home. Our home, hallelujah, our home going to be that new Jerusalem, that new, that new earth that's going to be created. So we don't get caught up in all this Bling, bling. Amen. We don't get caught up in what the world is doing. Yeah. The world is dancing to the sound of a different drummer than us. <laughs> We're not supposed to be listening to the drama, the drum beat up the world. We're supposed to be walking according to the word of God. Mm -hmm. So, uh, 
But let's go to the 15th chapter of the book of Acts. And this is what cleared me and got my understanding. I said, oh, Lord, okay. I hear you. I hear you. Now, in the 15th chapter of the book of Acts, this is dealing with the apostle Paul. And everybody is familiar with, with, with Paul. Paul was one of those Judaizers. He believed in keeping the law, the law of Moses. And Paul was a very educated man. He wasn't, he wasn't shortstopping by any means necessary, any means at all. Paul was a brilliant man. And he knew the Old Testament scriptures. He knew them. He didn't have an understanding of all of them, but he knew them. Mm -hmm. And God met Paul on the road to Damascus and saved Paul and brought him into the true light. Jesus Christ himself met Paul and told Paul what he needed to do. Paul went down to a little old preacher house by the name of Ananias. And Ananias got Paul down there and told Paul, Arise, call it up on the name of the Lord and be baptized. Paul was baptized in Jesus' name. Paul was filled with the Holy Ghost. And Paul started ministering because Jesus had told him, I have chosen you to be a minister and apostle to the Gentiles. You would go out and preach this gospel to the Gentiles. The Jewish brethren, the apostles, they was called to teach the gospel to the Jews. And after Jesus had died and rose from the dead, then Jesus told him that not only go to the house of Israel, you go throughout the entire world preaching this gospel to the Jews, the Gentiles, any living being need to hear this gospel. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So Paul went out. Paul went all down through different parts of the country, the Gentile area is preaching Jesus Christ and him crucified. He was preaching repentance, water baptism in Jesus' name, Holy Ghost speaking in tongues. That's what Paul was preaching. When you study from the, I believe, the 11th chapter over to the 28th chapter, Paul was out ministering basically to the Gentile world. Cornea and all these different parts of Asia. Paul went into those areas preaching. And there came some Judaizers. Some of those brothers that Paul came out of that type of teaching. They came behind Paul telling those very people. Now, let me, let me backtrack a little bit. Where did God Paul get his teaching from? He was taught by Jesus himself. Paul was taught by Jesus. Yes, Jesus had taught his, his, his 12 apostles. Jesus ascended up into heaven. Y'all know he went back up into heaven, and 10 days later, he sent back the Holy Ghost. By the evidence of speaking in tongues, as the Spirit of God gave the utterance. And a few days later, Paul was on his way to Damascus to lock up those sanctified folk, those, those folk that were speaking in tongue and living holy. He was going there to lock them up and bring, bring them back to Jerusalem. Some of them would be locked up in jail. Some of them would be fed to the animals. Some would be pulled apart. That is what this persecution of the church, the book of Fox Martyrs. Y'all read it sometime. There was a woman that was pregnant. And I, I can't call her name right now. But she was a follower of Jesus. And they locked her up because she was a follower of Jesus. The church, the early church, went through some persecution. We're not going through no persecution now. Early church went through some persecution. She was locked up and she was pregnant. She had a, a maid with her and... and, and and, and they locked up in jail because she would not deny Christ. She wouldn't deny him. So her father was a man of influence. So he went to the ward, whoever's in charge, and he begged them not to uh, kill his daughter. 
to, to, to her daughter to be a martyr. So they gave him op opportunity to go to her. And so he visited her in jail and he asked her to deny Christ. He begged her to deny him. She would not deny Christ. So they allowed her to have the baby. And when she, once she had the baby, then she was fed to the wild beast, eating alive. And we can't even stand for somebody to look at us and call us ugly. We, we, we said we saved. We can't allow, we, we get hurt because somebody says something and, 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 and we get all mad and want to get all mad. And, you, and, and look what this saint went through, the early church went through. Okay, so uh, uh, she, uh, Paul was one of those guys that was participating in that. He was standing there when Stephen, the first murderer, the first deacon that was murdered in the church. Paul was standing there holding those men coat that they throw stone and stone Stephen to death. Paul was there. Now this same Paul, after being met by Jesus on the road to Damascus, he's preaching what he once persecuted. And Jesus met with Paul. And Paul was taught by Jesus for three years. Jesus taught him. And when he came out of Arabia, after being taught by Jesus, he came in Jerusalem, and he was one whip behind the chief apostle. Peter was the chief apostle. And all the brethren there in Jerusalem. That what they knew, he knew. Why? Because he was taught by the same man that taught them. So, so now, Paul is out ministering. He's preaching all, throughout all of Asia. People are getting saved. People are, are getting saved. According to the day, how the Holy Ghost fell on the day of Pentecost, they all were speaking in tongues as the Spirit of God gave utterance, and they were baptized in Jesus' name. That was the church. That's the bride. And, 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 and Paul was out preaching this gospel, and the Gentiles was getting saved. The church was being established all over Asia Minor. And there came some Judaizers. Well, you know, y'all got to keep the Sabbath day. Y'all got to be circumcised. You got to keep certain holy days. See, what they was trying to do, they was trying to bring what was under the law before grace and mercy and trying to bring it and blend it in with grace and mercy. And it won't work. Jesus said, you can't take new wine and put it in an old skin. You can't mix it. You... Grace and mercy, salvation comes through grace and mercy of Jesus Christ. It stands alone. That is God's plan of salvation. That is a finished product. You can't add nothing to it. That's why when Jesus died on that cross, Jesus came and manifest, shown what God was calling for. And that's why when he died on that cross, the last words Jesus said was what? It is finished. What's finished, Jesus? What is finished? The plan of salvation that God had for humanity. It's finished. You can't add nothing to it, and don't you dare take nothing away from it. A finished product. So, now these brothers coming along trying to add to it. So, it caused a problem. It caused a problem. So Paul had to leave his mission and come back to the mother church at Jerusalem. And this is where they had the first church council. And you'll find that in the 15th chapter of the book of Acts. Go down, Cynthia, Minister Wilson. 15th chapter of the book of Acts. And uh, let's see here. Uh, 
Just start reading at that first verse. And certain men which came down from Judea taught the brethren and said, Except ye be circumcised after the man of Moses, ye cannot be saved. Now these are the brothers come after Paul and preach the gospel. These folks, these, these people are saved. Mm -hmm. And here come these certain brothers coming in and trying to add to a finished product. When Jesus died, Jesus said it is finished. The plan of salvation for humanity is done. You can't add nothing to it, and you can't take nothing from it. You shouldn't. If you take something from it, you're in trouble. That's what John the Revelation said. And you add to it, you're in trouble. That's why we have to be very careful. Stay with what the Bible teaches. Read. When therefore Paul and Barnabas had no small decision and dis disputation with them, they determined that Paul and Barnabas and certain other of them should go up to Jerusalem unto the apostles and elders about this question. Let's go back to the foundation. Let's go back to where it all started. Because this, 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 this allowed me to say, this garbage that these brothers bringing is causing a problem. The devil always want to interject something. The devil want to tell you, oh, you ain't got to do all that. Nowadays, that's what you tell the church. Yeah, you don't have to go to church every Sunday. You don't have to go to no Bible class. The Bible said, the uh, man teaches his own self. <laughs> In the month or two of the scripture, you'll find out that that's not so. Read on. Verse 3. And being brought on their way by the church, they passed through Phoenix and Samaria, declaring the conversion of the Gentiles, and they caused great joy unto all the brethren. And when they were come to Jerusalem, they were received of the church and of the apostles and elders, they, and they declared all things that God had done with them. But there rose up certain of the sect of the Pharisees, which believed, saying, Them religious folks. That it was needful to circumcise them and to command them to keep the law of Moses. Then the apostles and elders came together for to consider of this matter. Now, this is why this is how you handle church matters when you when there's a problem. You bring it to the head, the leaders. These are men that should be anointed by God, appointed by God that are walking according to God's word, that are, are, are saturating their soul, their mind, in God's word. So when there's a problem come, they can go to God's word and say, okay, let's see what the Bible said. Let's see what God said. So they brought it to the proper source to get a bizarre. Read on. Verse 7. And when there had been much disputing, Peter rose up and said unto them, men and brethren, Ye know how that a good while ago God made choice among us that the Gentiles by my mouth should hear the word of the gospel and believe. And God, which knoweth the hearts, bear them witness, giving them the Holy Ghost, even as he did unto us, and put no difference between us and them, purifying their hearts by faith. Now therefore, why tempt ye God to put a yoke upon the neck of the disciples, which neither our fathers nor we were able to bear? Why you want to put a yoke up on people? Well, you know, I think. <laughs> Why you want to put a yoke up on the people? Now, I understand that there are certain things that we should have some kind of respect for God's house. There are certain things dress code we should have. We should just come into God's house any old willy-nilly. Men and brethren, especially when you say that I've been born again, I have the Spirit of God, then if you are born again, you have the Spirit of God, you ought to be walking according to his word, and his word tells us to do things in moderation. Just don't enter into God's presence any old kind of way. Well, the Bible said, come as you are. Yes, it did say that. 
But once you come and you hear God's word and you find out what God required, then you ought to line up to his word if you want to have fellowship with him. <laughs> God is not going to change for us. If God was going to change, he would have changed when Jesus went in the Garden of Gethsemane. And he was looking at death. And he said, Father, if it be possible, let this cup pass. I don't want to die. But he understood this for this cause came out to the world to die for the sins of the world. But he prayed three times. He said, let this cup pass. What cup? That, that cup, that, that cup of death. That cup that's going to take on something that Jesus never had participated in his life. He took on the sins of the world. He never had nothing to do with sin. That was bitterness in that cup. Sin is bitter. Sin is wrong. Sin will destroy you. He, after that third prayer, he said, nevertheless, not my will, but thy will be done. He submitted himself to God. And that's what we ought to be willing to do, to submit ourselves to God. And he went to that cross, and when he went to that cross, he suffered every, he took on every sin that was operating in this world. He took it on. He took it on your sin and my sin and the sin that was going to come after we, <laughs> our children's sin, our children, 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 children's sin. That's why the Bible tells us God so loved the world that he did what? Sin is only begotten son into the world. He who ever believeth in him shall not perish but have everlasting life. And he that believeth not is condemned. God sent not his son into the world to condemn the world, but the world through Jesus Christ will have life. He was the answer. He was the finished product for the plan of salvation that God had for us. And he gave it to these men right here that we're reading about. And they're showing us what God is requiring of us through his word. Read on. Verse 11. But we believe that through the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ we shall be saved even as they then all the multitude kept silence and gave audience to Barnabas and Paul, declaring what miracles and wonders God had wrought among the Gentiles by them. And after they had held their peace, James answered, saying, Men and brethren, hearken unto me. Now James was the head of the mother church in Jerusalem. It is said that this was Jesus' brother. He was head of the church in Jerusalem. And James listened to everything that was said. And James going to make a decision. After hearing every, all of the statement, James going to make a decision. And that decision will define what the church of today ought to function on. Read. Simeon had declared how God at the first did visit the Gentiles to take out of them a people for his name. And to this agree to the and to this agree the words of the prophets as it is written. After this I will return and will build again the tabernacle of David, which is fallen down, and I will build again the rooms thereof, and I will set it up. That the residue of men might seek after the Lord, and all the Gentiles upon whom my name is called, said the Lord, who doeth all these things. Known unto God are all his works from the beginning of the world. Wherefore, my sentence is that we trouble not them which from among the Gentiles are turned to God. Now, this is the Gentile dispensation of time. This is what we're living in. This is the dispensation time of the Gentiles age. And, and, and James is saying, this is what the church, the Gentile church, 
This is what the church is required of the church. James finna make a final statement. And we ought to adhere to it. Read that 19 verse again. Wherefore my census is that we trouble not them which from among the Gentiles are turned to God, but that we write unto them that they abstain from pollutions of idols and from fornication and from things strangled and from blood. But Moses of old time had in every city them that preach him being read in the synagogues every Sabbath day. Now, he says here, read that 20 verse again. This is the message for the Gentile church, the church of the day. Read that 20 verse again. But that we write unto them that they abstain from pollutions of idols and from fornication and from things strangled and from blood. You, this is what is required of us. I don't see anywhere where it says no jewelry, no pain. But in the epistles, as we go into the epistles, see, this is how we, Acts tells us how we are to get into the church. Once we get into the church, the epistles teach us how we are to conduct our lives once we get in the body of Christ. So in the epistles, it teaches us that we should adorn ourselves. We shouldn't draw attention. You shouldn't be wearing all kinds of jewelry that drawing attention to you. You shouldn't be wearing stuff that drawing attention to you. People can't hear the message for looking at you. Drawing attention. We are the Bible tell us, the epistle tell us, we are to dress in moderation. Be moderate in our dress codes. Be moderate in how we wear our jewelry. Because if we want to say you shouldn't wear earrings, you shouldn't wear a little necklace, then we got to pull off our watches and rings because that's jewelry. We, we can't add nothing to it. And don't take nothing away from it. But let your Holy Ghost, let your Holy Ghost lead and guide you. Be omiss submissive to your Holy Spirit. If the Holy Spirit tell you that's too tight, take it off. That's too short, take it off. That's what the death. The Holy Spirit is the one that controls us. We no longer living by, we no longer being obedient to Hadamite spirit. It's the Holy Spirit now that is in us. It's talking to us. It's telling us. It's leading, guiding us. And we have to be obedient to that Holy Spirit if we want God to be pleased with us. It's a whole lot more we go. My time is up. It's a whole lot more we could go. And we'll keep this going. We're going to keep working with you. Because we're going to go into some more things regarding. Because what we're doing, we are preparing to meet our God. And when we meet him, we want him to look at us and say, well done. Enter into your rest. That's what I want to hear. Well done. And I'm not talking about a steak. I'm talking about, I want him to say, well done, you did what you was required to do. You were obedient to my word. Well done. You was faithful over a few things. I'm going to make you ruler over many. That's, what I, that's all I want to hear. I'm not concerned about fame and fortune down here on this earth. I want God to be pleased with me. And so therefore, when I see that I've error, believe me, Adam don't have any problem getting it right, especially when it's coming up against what God's words and said. And the Holy Ghost 
the Spirit of God will lead us if we'll let it. Yeah. The Bible said many that are led by the Spirit of God, they are sons of God. Yeah. That's talking about women's too, females too. <laughs> you, are, you don't escape. <laughs> all right, all right, all right. I'm, my time is up and I I thank the Lord for those questions. I thank the Lord for it. And we're going to keep going. We're going to keep the next topic. We'll be going further into this study. Because uh, James said, as he was addressing uh, those brethren, and he said, this is what the Gentiles need to do. And he, if you keep reading, he said, and if they do this, they do well, very well. It's a lot of stuff that we've added in there that is not biblical. I didn't understand it. I, I didn't, the years ago, I didn't understand it. I went to my pastor one time, and I heard a preacher say something, and I went in, and all of the bishop was sitting on behind him when the preacher got up and preached, and he made a statement, and I sat there, and I said, where did he coming from? And I that bothered me because of what my home teaching, where I grew up under. So I finally, I wait till I kind of got cooled down. About two weeks, I went to my pastor. And I said, how come somebody didn't rebuttal that brother when he made that statement? And I told him what, what, I, was, what I was talking about. And he looked at me and he said, Adam, you can't use those scriptures that you was using. I was going back to Genesis when Jacob took off the gold and the earring. And he said, you can't use that scripture. He That's all he told me. And that thing had me puzzled. I was puzzled to death until God showed me one day. My pastor was dead and gone. One day I was studying and praying, and God began to walk me through these scriptures and show me. And when he showed it to me, I said, well, I agree. Lord, from now on, I know. I know. If he had explained it to me, I probably wouldn't have got it, but God showed it to me. God showed it to me. And uh, uh, we're, that, we're in the Gentile age now. We're in the Gentile age. And James said, if you do this, if you do this, you know, then you do well. But I'm not saying, when I started Lighthouse, I told my creed was, the saints at Lighthouse, I told them, I would that you not wear jewelry. But if you think it enhanced your beauty, if, it think, if you think it makes you look a little bit then nothing wrong with wearing a little small earring, a little dime with a little small one, a little small ring. Just don't come in with them chandeliers hanging off of you. <laughs> don't come in with all that around your neck. You want to wear a little necklace? Put it on. What you doing? You're dressed in modest. The Bible tells us to be what? Modest. And all that doing. We come to church, we shouldn't come in here in a pants suit. Come to church, you come here dressed modest in a nice dress. That's, that's, that's how I do what. Now, please get me what I'm saying. If a person have not received the Holy Ghost by the evidence of speaking in tongues, then I can't tell you how to dress. I'm passing the church. I can tell you what the rules are. It's up to you to do it. But once you receive the Holy Ghost, once you receive God's Spirit, and you become a child of God, because now you have His Spirit, I expect you to be subject to the rules. The rules I set are not grievous. All I ask is just have some respect yeah. for God's house. And I think I can 
prove that with, with the scriptures. I can take you to the scriptures and show you yeah. why I make the statement that I make. Especially when we say that we are born again. When we say that we are born again, we're in the family. We're in God's family. We're in the church. And this is the thing that Israel, uh, uh, the, the, the brother was having, they were going around telling them that they had to do things that was not for the church of the day, the Gentile age. God used that for Israel in their day. It was not applicable to us today. God told Israel in, in their day there was certain food that they could not eat. That was for Israel, just that nation. But to us, in the New Testament church, in the Gentile church, Paul said every creature God made is good to be received with thanksgiving. Now, I'm not, if you don't like pork, I'm not telling you go eat no pork because you don't want no pork. Your pork might run your blood pressure up. But I'll eat pork in a minute. Okay. I'll eat catfish in a minute. The Jews don't eat it. Some of the Jews. <laughs> Them the devout Jews, they don't eat it. But I know some Jewish brothers tell that real book. <laughs> but uh, what I'm saying, the scripture says applies. There's certain thing in that Old Testament scripture do not apply to the church of the day. That certain thing doesn't apply. He was talking specifically to Israel. So that's why we have to rightly divide God's word. And we need the spirit of God to help us to do that. And without the spirit of God, we won't be able to do it. I'm going to tell you, you have you bouncing off a wall. All right. We're going to, we're going to, thanks for the question. Thank you all for the question. And, and I like this. I like this. Bring some questions. And we just go with the Bible. Let the Bible do the talking. Yeah. And we're gonna keep. We're gonna keep going. We're gonna pursue, pursue, pursue because the Bible teaches us that this Word of God gives us knowledge, knowledge of God. So when we get knowledge of God, then we know how to walk with God. We know how to please God. That's what it's all about. All right. <clears throat>